Creating and sharing iCloud calendars is something every senior should know how to do. Think about it. You have doctors and dentist appointments, senior activities, maybe people coming into your home for therapy visits or house cleaning. A shared calendar can help coordinate activities across devices and families. You're letting your loved ones know how to keep track of your daily activities. I'm guessing if you're using an iPhone or iPad, so are most of the people in your inner circle. If they're not, I'll show you a workaround at the end of this video. Thanks so much for tuning in to Ellen's Tips for iOS. Let's get started. Before we jump right in, let's make sure that you've set up your iCloud calendar correctly so that it's syncing across all of your devices. You'll tap on the Settings app. You'll tap on your name in the upper left corner. You'll select iCloud. And then just make sure that the toggle switch is turned on next to Calendar. Let's open up your Calendar app and take a look at it. So when we open the Calendar app, your view may look a little bit different than mine, but you can view your calendar by day, week, month, or year. I'm going to go back and tap on day. And I'm not really sure why it jumps to January of 2022, uh, but if you want to get back to today's date, come over to the right-hand corner and just click on today. That will take you to today's date. On the left-hand corner over here, you have a calendar icon. And if I click on that, you'll see a listing of the calendars that I have in the calendar app. Apple pre-populates two calendars, a home calendar and a work calendar. You can delete either one or both, but Apple requires that you at least have one calendar set up. The next option you see is what looks like an inbox. If I tap on that, what this is, is if somebody sends you an invitation to an event in an email, it may show up here under uh, the inbox. And when you click on it, it'll add that event to your calendar. We also have a list of all of the events that are upcoming in the order that they appear. And then the last thing we have here is a plus sign to add an event. And that's what we'll walk through next. Let's start by adding a new event. I'll tap on the plus sign and you'll see that uh, immediately the keyboard pops up. You can click it away by coming down to the right hand corner, but I'm going to leave it up for right now. I'm going to go ahead and paste into the title area, uh, doctor's appointment and I'm going to say that this doctor's appointment, uh, I'll set it up for, let's say, 414 at 1 p.m. And usually your calendar appointments are in one hour increments. So but if you think your, your appointment's going to last longer, then put in an end time. So I'll just put in an end time as 3 p.m. Below that, it lists your time zone. If you want this to repeat, you can uh, have any of the events that you set up to repeat. If you have something that goes on monthly at the same time, you know, maybe you have a bingo or whatever, a, a senior activity, you can set that up to repeat uh, monthly, weekly, whatever it is you need. For right now, I'm just going to leave that alone. You can put in travel time if you want. And then depending on how many calendars you have, you can go ahead and choose which calendar you want to add this event to. I'm going to leave it at home for right now. I'm going to scroll down a little further. And if you have a URL that you need to add, or maybe you need to add some notes to this calendar, you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead now and tap add and you'll see that this calendar or this appointment doctor's appointment has been added to my calendar on the right hand side you'll see alerts if you want to be alerted to this appointment that's coming up you'll tap on alert and then you can choose how, when you want to be alerted to it you can do one week before 15 minutes before whatever it is, or if you don't want to alert, you don't have to pick, you know, you do not have to choose that. But I'm going to go ahead and just say two days before 
I want to be alerted to this doctor's appointment. So now we've created an event and we've added it to our calendar. But the real powerfulness of the calendar app is if you choose to share that calendar with somebody else, they will then be able to know what appointments you have going on, what your daily activities are, and we're going to go ahead and set up a separate shared calendar. So you'll have calendar appointments maybe that only you want to see, but then we can set up a shared calendar that allows you to uh, share that with somebody else. And if you allow them to, they can make changes to the calendar or also add their appointments to the calendar. So a shared calendar is very powerful. To add a calendar, we're going to come down to the bottom left corner where it says add calendar. We'll click on that and you have two options, a subscription calendar or just to add a calendar. We're going to just add a calendar and we're going to give our calendar a name. And the account will be iCloud because we want this calendar to sync across all of our devices. You can click on a color and choose whatever color you want. I'm going to go ahead and just choose red. And I'm going to go ahead now and tap on done. And that's it. Now we've created a calendar. Now that we've created a calendar, let's go ahead and share that calendar with somebody else. So I want to share my Ellen's Activities calendar. I'm going to click on the I next to the calendar and you'll see shared with add person. I'm going to tap on add person. I am going to choose to share it with one of my sisters. And when I do, a notification will be sent. As you can see right now, it's pending. But if she accepts the invitation, then you know, she will have access to this calendar as well as I will have access to this calendar. So I'm going to go ahead and show you if I tap on view and edit, I can choose to allow her to edit and add her appointments to the calendar if I want to, or I can um, turn that off and then she would only be able to see my appointments. I'm going to go ahead and choose to allow editing so she can share her appointments and down here at the bottom, I can choose to stop sharing this calendar anytime I choose. I'm going to go ahead and tap on back and I'm going to tap on done. And so now I've shared my calendar with uh, another person and they have access to add things to that calendar as well. Let's come back into the editing area of this particular calendar. So just tap on the I. And what I want to show you is here it says shared events. If any changes are made to this calendar, if you have the toggle uh, next to show changes uh, toggled on, you'll, a message will be displayed. If there's been events added or changed, you will automatically uh, be notified by of that. You can also um, toggle on the switch next to event alerts. And I always leave that on so that anybody who is on the shared calendar will be alerted to changes. And then in the beginning of this video, I promised you a way to uh, share a calendar with someone who is a non-Apple user. So if we scroll a little bit, you'll see an area that says public calendar. If I turn that toggle on, what happens is a link is created and you can share that link with anyone who is not uh, an Apple user. They will not be able to edit the calendar, but they will be able to view the calendar. So you just want to be careful about who you're sharing the link with. Uh, it should be someone that you trust, but that's a way for you to be able to share your calendar with a non-Apple user. So that pretty much covers the iCloud calendar app. Sharing your calendar is easy and can help family members keep track of your appointments. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.